Hello, welcome to the Scale Model Club, and on this week's show, something a little bit special. It's the Revels Phantom F4J, but especially from 74 Squadron at RAF Watersham. Hello, welcome to the Scale Mod Club. On this week's show, Rebels 172nd Scale Phantom F4J uh, with the decals from 74 Squadron based at RAF Watershed. Uh, especially for a friend of mine who was stationed there. So um, we start where we do with all the models in the cockpit. Um, I did have a few problems with this model kit. It isn't the brilliant kit it's not amazing um, it's quite old there is an unboxing video of it on my channel um, but there was a few fit issues but then again it was very cheap so here we have the ejector handles on the seats which is quite nice the cockpit's nice everything fits together and it's 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 nicely detailed it's not bad at all it's the rest of the kit I have issues with yeah. So thanks everybody for watching my videos. Thank you for liking and subscribing. So here we have the cockpit comes in one piece. Um, it's nice because um, there's not much detail on that. So you can stick the decals down or you can stick the uh, some PE sets if you, if you get hold of them. So I've cleaned all that up, put the seats together. Uh, the bottoms of the seats are already in, uh, moulded in, so you just put the backs on. Like that. Using the extra thin Tamiya glue, love that stuff. I've now got some of the quick setting stuff, so I must give that a go. I've got some of that to fit in my new glue holder from Bulldog Models give him a look if you're bored it's got a good website it sells quite a lot of interesting stuff there's also another video about that on my on my uh, channel this is why I see I had a few a couple of issues with this oh every single time I stuck it on it fell off and it was quite awkward to see where it was supposed to sit in the cockpit. Don't do many jets, so. But we'll do more. Um, as you see, I've got lots of decals for these F4Js, so I might see if I can find a slightly more expensive kit to make it look a little nicer. But after doing the yellow jack, a friend of mine on Instagram said, oh, shame it wasn't from 74 Squadron RF Watership. So I thought, you know what? I'll have a flick around the internet and I found some decals. Found a Phantom. And here we are. Link to the Instagram stuff is... Uh, is in the bottom of the in the bottom description of the video if you want to follow me there as well. So that's the dashboard dashboards. Well, all right, we'll call it a dashboard. It's fitted, seats are fitted. Uh, seat belts and everything moulded onto the seats, so they're just going to take a little bit of crafty painting. But generally, like I said, I, I don't think that's a bad looking, uh, not bad looking cockpit at all. New set of tweezers there. Got them free. Can't actually remember where I got them free from. <laughs> Let's have a look. I bought a model from there and they came free with the model. 
but I've thrown the bag away. Dave Coley Emporium .co.uk off of eBay bought a model from him and came with some free tweezers and they're actually rather good tweezers. Right, so uh, going to paint the cockpit and the bits where the cockpit sit in the fuselage. Um, this is all painted in MIG Ammo's light compass grey. Compass Ghost Grey. Uh, I used um, a grey colour set uh, for this. I don't think they're the, the official colours that an RAF aircraft would be painted in, but I basically used um, light grey, medium grey, and dark grey for MIG ammo. So. Nice little set, and the shades weren't too bad. I don't think they showed up too bad. Um, so once I painted the cockpit all the grey colour, I then repainted um, the sides and the ejector seats in just a black colour. Um, I also painted the seats themselves in a nice um, olive drab, because um, they tended to be green in the cushions just with a very small brush and a very steady hand. And once I'd done all of that, I then gave the whole thing a clear coat, which I used Tamiya's Clear. X22, XF22, X22, wasn't it? Because it's clear, clear. Have a look, uh, X22, yeah. I then thinned that 50-50 with Tamiya's own um, thinners. And it sprays lovely. Don't have any issues with it because I have lot. I had lots of issues with different types of glosses, and I have really haven't sorted it out myself yet. That's some detail work out of the way. Seats here, seats there, buttons, that kind of thing. Came out nice. Now, these are side parts that you glue onto the cockpit. Now, I couldn't for the life of me work out when to put them in, where to put them in, how to put them in, so I didn't put them in. Um, you can't see them. Um, once the fuselage is together, you can't see them, so they beat me. I, I, I looked at it a couple of times and I just I just could not, I looked at the instructions, I just could not work out where they were supposed to go, so they didn't. So now we've got to, I'll show this little bit of the decals um, process because um, I haven't got the decal process for the rest of the aircraft on the video. So, warm water, uh, reverse tweezers to hold your decal, um, leave it in the warm water, I'll turn it, I'll put it in for about five seconds, turn it, wait about five seconds, take it out, wait until it's loose on your paper. So we'll just take it out. Um, I fit these a little differently because I've got these new tweezers and they were really good for this but as you can see that's moving so I got hold of it in my precision tweezers put some mark fit to help it settle down and then you just pop the decal on and then once it's on you can move it around until the decal setting solution has gone off I do recommend Tamiya's decal solution because it's good it's really good it's just one, just one application like that. And if it doesn't sit down how you want it to, you can just go and put another decal. You can now put another, you know, run the paintbrush over it again. My only real problem with it is, is the brush inside it is a little bit stiff. 
but you can always get yourself an old paintbrush and use that to apply it but it's good stuff I haven't got the Mark Fit Strong stuff because I struggled to get that but I, should, I, think, I should think Mark Fit Strong is just a bit bit more of a potent solution but I'm, I, have, I don't have any problems with this Mark Fit stuff and that's the cockpit decaled up covered up so now we've got to start on the fuselage. Now this is a long plane. Look at it. It's like a banana. So I decided to try and use different glue. Um, I tried to... I was going to... I used the Revel. Um, one with the metal stick. What's it called? I know it's Contactor, but it's Precision something, isn't it? Professional. There you go. Contactor Professional. Um... Apart from the fact that it always gunks up the metal tube that it comes out of, I like it because it's quite thick. And when you're doing a really long fuselage like this, it's nice to use the thicker glue. So test fitted the cockpit there, cover that in some glue, then fit the cockpit in, and then we'll have a go with this uh, Rebel Contactor on the, uh, on the fuselage itself. As I said, it, this is about £10 cheaper than any other Phantom kit. Um, I can see why, because it's an older model. It's an older mould, shall I say. It also doesn't have recessed panel lines. Now, if you want, you can sand them down and rescribe them. It's not something I'm very proficient in, so I just decided not to do it. Well, I've never really done it. I've not got a scriber, so... So we just left kit WIP. So that's the cockpit stuck in place. Let's get it on and get this fuselage together, shall we? It's a very nice, easy kit to build. Fuselage goes together, wings go on the bottom. Bosh. So here's the contact. So now, bearing in mind, I have cut out the part where I had to set fire to the end of it to loosen the glue a bit and muck about to get the glue to flow. But once it's flowing, it, you, you can put it exactly where you want it and it stays there because it's obviously a little thicker. So, sorry, that's a little bit off camera. Just run it all around the edge. And stick the two together. There is a lot of different camera angles in this and a lot of different types of two cameras used because I have got a new one um, or it's new to me should I say um, um, and it, it does give a nicer picture but I've not quite got myself set up on it so apologies for that one. So I've got all that lined up. Lovely. Smash in, find me a peg, not that one. All right, we'll use that one. And now see what I then decided to do was just to run that down the gap. Um, and I ran that all the way around the front because we still had a little bit of a gap, stuck a peg on it to hold that together. Now the wings I haven't got footage of um, because basically you put top and bottom and then you just glue it on the bottom of that. It's, it's, it's an easy process. So I thought we won't we'll skip that. So these are the three paints I was using. Um, now I used the dark grey. No, sorry, I used the medium grey on the inside. Sorry, I used the dark grey on the inside, the medium grey on the part that sticks out of the aircraft. Um, the light was only ever used for the bottom, so you have almost a white grey on the bottom. Medium grey was for the rest of the aircraft, and then I did the nose cone, which from all pictures had a slightly different colour, was done in the dark grey. 
So these are the air intakes. Uh, and for the painting process, I always like to I put the air takes on. I then cut myself a couple of little bits of dish sponge um, and shove them down the intakes for masking so that when you spray it, you haven't got to try and mask them up. So we just stick the intake on and like I say, what I do is I will stick a foam down the front end so that you, you, the bit you've just painted on the inside doesn't get covered in different colour paint. They didn't fit very well at all um, and they did need a little bit of filler. There's a few little bits that needed a bit of filler but in general the, the, the fit wasn't bad. The cockpit was a nightmare. Um, I wanted to do, oh, I did do the cockpit, I wanted to do the cockpit open. So uh, I put, I pushed it all down shut and masked it. Um, so it was shut for the main painting and obviously when painting was over, I demasked it and then glued them in on the upright position. But they wouldn't have fitted properly if they were down because there was just too many gaps. And I don't know why, just the the the, the front part of the of the windscreen didn't fit properly um, and therefore left a gap. Um, which is okay when you've got it open because you don't really notice it that much. But if you'd have wanted it shut, it it'd have been such a pain to sort out. So here we go, this is the underneath. Uh, that's the light grey, very light grey, literally just covered the whole thing in light grey. Um, point 0.2 needle in the airbrush, which is a bit low, I might try and go back to point 0.4, but I was, I was mucking about with this because I wanted to do the uh, panel lines as well. So. I ended up just turning, I needed to turn the pressure up a little bit to get the MIG ammo paint to flow because that's a, I, I do struggle with that, it's a bugger to get it to flow out of the airbrush. They just, do, they do some nice kits and colours and colour modulations and I wish Vallejo would do it because I much prefer Vallejo paint. But once you get your head round it, that's, it's all good. The nice thing about the ammo stuff is it's very, very see-through, very translucent. So it does make you put lots of little coats on, which is what you really want to do. You don't want to put one big, one nice thick coat on. It never looks very nice. So two or three light coats is always a lot better. You can see there where I've masked the um, cat and bee and stuck it down. So I used Vallejo Black just to do the panel lines. Um, you don't have to be that accurate with the panel lines because obviously you're going to go over it with the grey again. I'd do a light coat over the top of it and then touch in some little bits to make the panel lines a little bit less ropey. Because you're really looking for a shadow rather than a black line. Uh, I wasn't going to do much um weathering on this aircraft because i wanted it to look nice and new uh, the only thing i weathered a little bit was on the bottom here so after i painted all of this i think i covered the top half of it in the brown um Megamo wash and then dragged it down with a paintbrush to sort of give a streaky look but it literally it's just like a like a translucent brown streaky look it's it's almost like it's come out of the factory, flown to an airfield, and that's where it stayed. It does not oily or covered in dirt. It's just used. So that's the bottom half done. I think I probably, after that, um, once it dries, they, they still look a bit prominent. So I just gave it another coat after that. I uh, wasn't too worried about the rear because that obviously gets covered in a silver. Um, I painted the engine parts in a uh, metal colour from Vallejo. Uh, I think it was aluminium actually. It's probably probably should be a steel. But and then once I'd done that, because it's already a gloss, I then covered it in some black wash to give it a 
a used look, a burnt look. So that's why I wasn't too worried about getting it covered here. Uh, the front I painted first with the dark grey and then just masked it up. Look at the concentration. Look at it. Like I said, I'm still quite new to the airbrush, so sometimes it looks nice, sometimes it doesn't. But I turned the air down to see if I could get some really thin lines, and I did all right. I did. I, I, I was really pleased with myself. Um, I did the whole aircraft like that, and it, it came out really nicely. Just took a long time. Right, so these are the extra decal I got from a company called Hannant's. Um, on the back it shows you, this actually tells you all the colours that you need to use, but they're in a company called x Color. So if you buy the colours from, from Hannant's as well, it's all good. Um, these are all the decals you get in the set. Uh, the set cost me about seven pound, um, but obviously you get lots of different versions of the Phantom. They're, they're from Watterson, Collins B, all over the place. Um, and the one we're going to be doing is at the bottom here, uh, which is the grey from 74 Squadron, Tiger Squadron as they're called. Um, but I, like I said, I've got the decals and I'm really looking forward to doing a camouflage version. Um, but yes, you get good instructions, quite clear instructions, uh, and a really nice decal sheet. The only thing I will say is you, you have to be quite experienced with decals. They're very thin um, and they're very sticky, which is all good. But if you get them in a slightly the wrong place, you tend to tear them rather than move them. So here we are painted and we're going to stick the decals on. Uh, like I said, I didn't because there's loads of me sticking decals on stuff, so I didn't film it. So the engines. Engines, I painted those silver. Um, I then dry brushed over the top in Tamiya's dark iron colour. Um, and then once they were fitted onto the aircraft, I then washed the whole area with a black. I thought they looked quite nice. They looked very metally. Like I said, I didn't want them to look charred or anything. And like you can see on the bottom there, I just dulled the grey down a little just to make it look like it had flown somewhere once. Uh, and once that was fitted, there we go. Yeah, see, not bad. I don't think they look too bad. Okay, another nice shot of the aircraft holder from uh, Bulldog Models. That's also very good. I've got another video for those. It's a good bit of kit, that. So we've got the, uh, the undercarriage on now, painted, weathered. Gave those a little uh, black um, wash too. Um, the wheels were nice. Wheels came in two bits, so put the wheel inside the tyre. Uh, so it looks nice. You don't have to worry about painting it uh, so accurately. Um, and just a new thing that I've done with most of my aircraft now is I've started to put the undercarriage on with super glue because it just seems stronger. And there we are. That's the wheels fitted. Wheels fitted, undercarriage done, a little bit of weathering, everything's ready. The only thing left to do now is to pop the payload on. Now that came with a lot of different it came with a lot of different types of payload, but generally because it's an American uh, jet that's in the box, it came with some American bombs. So I've looked at a few pictures and decided to deck it out in a um REF deck out roll. I'm not 100% sure what all the missiles are, so I don't know a lot about missiles and jets. So it was going to come with three long range fuel tanks, the big white missiles, I don't know what they AMRAM, 
um, missiles and a couple of sidewinders for air to air. This is it, so we've got the four ammo missiles, the long range fuel tanks fitted because most of them seem to have three fitted and sorry my hands in the way but uh, this was an absolute little sod to get to fit so it fell over, it fell off, it fell over, I turned it around, it got stuck on. But anyway, I uh, hope you all enjoyed this video, thanks very much for watching. Um, there's some pictures to follow. I was very pleased with the outcome. It looks really nice. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe and come back next time for more modeling shenanigans. Uh, something a little bit different next time. I know a lot of people don't like them, but you know, I like to do all types of models myself. So it's the modeling I like doing. Get in there, get in there, get in there. Nope, fell over. <sighs> Gotta have patience, guys. And there we go. Fitted, glued. Thanks everywhere very much for watching, and I hope you enjoy the photos. Thank you very much. Thank you.